Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. I wanted to do some reprogramming on my ICOM IC2730 dual band ham radio transceiver. And I figured I would turn the camera on and show you guys how I was going about it. Now that the radio is powered up, I can see it's in memory mode and set to channel 11. To enter a new frequency, I need to switch into VFO mode and I can achieve that by short pressing this button. Now that I'm in VFO mode, I'm going to select the band that I want to work with. And to do that, I'm going to long press this button. Once I'm in band select mode, only the first three digits show up. I can use the channel selector to toggle between aircraft band, 2 meters, or 70 centimeters. For this demonstration, I'm going to choose 2 meters, and then I'm going to push the band button again to commit that. I can choose a frequency one of two ways, either using the tuning dial to dial it in. Now the other way to enter a frequency is to type it in directly using the keypad on the microphone, and that's what I think I'm going to do here. Now the frequency that I'm going to enter is the output frequency of my club's repeater, or 147300. The next thing I need to do is set the repeater offset, and to do that I'm going to press and hold this button here. Now you can see by default it comes up as off, but I can choose between duplex minus or a minus offset or duplex plus or a positive offset. So for this repeater, I'm gonna choose the positive offset and then I'm gonna push this button again to commit that. And now you can see here, this icon shows DUP. Now just for an example, if I were to choose a minus offset by selecting DUP minus and commit that, you can see that now the icon shows DUP minus. But again, this repeater has a positive offset, so I'm gonna set that. The next thing I need to do is enter in a CTCSS or PL tone for this repeater. And in order to do that, I'm gonna short press the menu button. Once we're in menu mode, you can see it states menu over here, and then we have a menu option on the right that can be selected by using the channel control to cycle through all of the various options. And you can also see that down here along the bottom, just above these buttons, are navigation icons. Left, right, enter, and clear. And this indicates what action these buttons will take while in menu mode. So now to get started with entering the CTCSS tone information, I'm gonna first cycle over to the first menu option, which is tone. And now I'm gonna press this button that correlates to the right hand arrow to enter this function. You can see that the labeling changes to tone to let us know that that's the function we're in, and then the actual setting is shown over here in the right, which by default is off. Now I can toggle through the available settings by using the channel control. The first one is labeled tone, and what this means is that the radio will only transmit a CTCSS tone, and the receiver will be wide open to receive anything. The third option is tone squelch. And what that does is allows the radio to transmit a CTCSS tone and will mute the receiver until it also receives a corresponding CTCSS tone. For this repeater, I just want to program in the transmit tone, so I'm going to select tone. And then to commit that, I'm going to hit this button for enter. And now we're back at the menu and can use the channel control to cycle through the next option that we want to set. To set the transmit CTCSS tone, I'm going to choose the R tone option from the menu. And again, I'll use the right arrow to enter that. And then I can cycle through all the available CTCSS tone frequencies using the channel control and then use the enter key to enter that. And now I can exit the menu by pushing the menu key. And now we're back in VFO mode. We of course have our repeaters output frequency listed here. The DUP icon here lets us know we have a positive offset selected and the T icon lets us know that we have transmit only CTCSS tone enabled. To test and make sure that I've got this program correctly, I will key up and see if I can activate the repeater. N1 NUG testing. Since we got the courtesy tone and squelch tail on the repeater, that tells me that I've got everything programmed correctly and I can now commit this to a memory channel. To do that, I'm going to push the MW key first. Once we're in memory channel programming mode, you can see there's various options available if we cycle through using the channel control. So I'll first go to the channel select entry 
and I'll push this right arrow key to descend into that. In this mode, the display changes. We have channel select listed here to let us know the mode we're in. And then you can see over here on the right, there is a memory channel displayed. If I use the channel control to cycle through, it actually shows me all of the current memory channels and what's programmed in them. Now I can choose to overwrite any of these channels that are previously programmed, or I can find a blank one to enter this into. Now once I choose a channel I wanna write this into, whether it has information in it already or it's blank, I'll just hit the enter key. Now that we've selected a channel, I can actually go in and also enter in a name for the channel by toggling up to the name menu option. I'll descend into that. You can see that the channel control toggles through all the various available characters that we can use. So I'm gonna choose N for my first one. And then I'm going to use the right arrow key to move over to the next character. And I'll just continue this until I get things set where I want them. Once I've got everything set the way I want, I can push the enter key to commit that. The next menu option is to set whether or not this channel should be skipped in scan mode. And we can also choose a memory bank to add this into. Now for this demo, I'm going to skip those two things and go right to the last option. And then I'm going to push enter. And once we do that, the radio comes up and asks whether or not we really want to do it. And by default, it's set to no. So I'm going to cycle to yes and then hit enter again. And you can hear the double beeps to let us know that that was entered correctly. Now to check and make sure that that actually got written in, I can push this button to go back into memory mode. And now if I cycle up to channel 24, which is where we wrote that, you can see everything is there. And if I key the radio up, we should be able to get that repeater. N1 NUG testing. As you saw, programming this radio isn't overly difficult, but it can be tedious, especially if you want to put a lot of memory frequencies into it. I've actually found some free software to make the process much quicker, easier, and simpler. And if you want to see all about that, watch this video next.